All right, talking about the Lycoming variable pressure controller. And we just went through it. So really it's a whole lot like a, a density controller and that it is sensing upper deck pressure, but we've taken out the differential controller and instead we vary the pressure inside of this controller. That's the name, variable pressure controller. Hey, Kevin. Yep. There we go. Yes. Yeah, is that cam uh, linked to the throttle, you say, right? Yes, it's linked to the throttle directly. So as you move the throttle forward, you're going to move the cam forward, and the cam's going to put more pressure on the spring. So there we go. One, two, three. Operates. Operates in the same way. In the same way as the um, density controller. Operate same way as the density controller does, does, except, I'll put the except down here, uses a cam linked, linked to the throttle linked to the throttle to vary pressure on a spring to vary pressure on a spring within the controller within the controller for optimum, optimum upper deck pressure. Upper deck pressure at a given throttle setting. So would that cam and spring be kind of like a substitute for the differential pressure controller? That's exactly what it is. I don't know. I was looking through my notes here. Um, let's see if we're going to slide. I don't really, I didn't write any notes here for the pressure relief valve for some reason. Maybe I do and I just don't see it here. And I'll get to it and go, oh, there it is. But um, okay, so just to take one more last look at this, because it really isn't much more to talk about. And I do love this right here, the state right here, the wastegate operation is continuous and reoccurring so it's constantly in its little state of flux um but uh i guess just to reiterate we said the variable controller is sensing upper deck pressure and if it wasn't for the cam linked to the throttle which varies the pressure on the spring in here then it really is just a density controller but by adding the cam in here you're telling it at one point, hey, I'm just at part throttle. I'm at idle. You don't need to get all excited over here and go to 40 inches. You're just fine with, you know, whatever it is, 15 inches or 20 inches. And then as you advance the throttle a little bit, it's sort of telling this thing right here, hey, you know, the throttle's opening up a little bit more, so you need to give us a little bit more pressure. So limit your pressure there. And that limits having to sense what's going on in the manifold. You just pre-planned it out with a, a kind of a, a power curve to figure it out. But otherwise, it's doing the exact same thing. But just as a safety measure, you put in a pressure relief valve, which is exactly what it sounds like, a pressure relief valve. So it is going to be set 
and depending on if it's a ground boosted engine or um, an, um, a, what's the word I'm looking for there, turbo normalized, then it's gonna be set. So like if it's turbo normalized, um, it's set usually about an inch higher, I think, than you want it to under most circumstances. So uh, this, the variable controller should be limiting this to 30 inches, but this is set right over here, the pressure relief valve that should something happen over here with the variable where it lets it get past 30, uh, 31, 32, this pressure relief valve is just a spring on a diaphragm that just pops open, pow, and the air just blasts out of there and relieves the pressure inside of the upper deck, bringing your back down to normal. So other than that, it's pretty much all the same that we've talked about. What else do I have here? Do I have anything else I want to add? Um, we, to pressure. we should write something here. Five uses. To calibrate that? We don't. It's calibrated at the factory. Uh, I, would, I would say that, and, and I think I'm making a point later on, but you have to be aware that these controllers are not to be messed with. So, um, you have very, very close tolerances on them. And when they're set, I mean, everything has to be set to this exact temperature or pressure. And so I, I have never adjusted these, nor do I think I ever would. Cause I don't, when you look at what it takes to adjust them, I don't think I've ever had the equipment that you would want in this sense to get this because they're very sensitive. Um, so I tell you that to say this particular system that uses this cam that's linked on there, don't go messing with the cam and the linkage on there. Cause that's going to change everything. So if you are going to change it, make sure you have all the proper data and you do it exactly the way it said. Otherwise, you're going to end up overboosting the engine and that is going to cost you a lot of money. So would this come preset from the factory or is yes. this something? Yep. Oh, okay. um, uses a let's see what I'm saying. Uh, pressure relief valve. Uses a pressure relief valve. that will open if upper deck pressure exceeds a set limit. Hey, Kevin. Yep. So on, in this system, what happens when you go past your uh, critical altitude? Well, then it, the, uh, the variable controller just closes. But what if you're not getting that, say it's 30 PSI, you're too high to get that 30 PSI it, and the turbo just keeps spinning faster and faster. And then you get detonation from that hot air. What's going to stop that? Well, that was a dang good question. Um, the, uh, well, it really, that's, that question actually goes right back to uh, the system we just looked at before and said, well, what really stops it there? And I don't really know exactly. I don't see anything, any specific controller in the system that stops it per se. I think it, I'm just, and now I have to guess on this one, that it's built into the, the design and that it just doesn't overspeed and it actually doesn't have the capability to compress any more air. You, you're, you're really limited it with your exhaust output at that point. And so because you're limited with your exhaust output, you're limited to turbo speed. You're limited to turbo speed. You're limited to the, com the, the compression on it. And that's how I was going to say, that doesn't it, the design of the impeller will prevent that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I hope I'm right. I have got no data that says it is designed to stop. It's just when I look at all the controllers and how they work, that's how it works in my mind. Uh, does not control the wastegate. There you go. I'll just add that in there. So pressure relief valve to open if the upper deck pressure exceeds set limit does not control the wastegate. And yeah, there's nothing in any of these systems that uh, that limits. And I guess that goes back to one of the statements that I wrote that I, or said that I said I'm not going to write. It, and that was the density controller. And it its job was just to deliver um, the proper density regardless of anything else. It, it took no uh, thought of anything else, engine damage, because I see nothing in there that limits it. There's no temperature sensor uh, that would stop or anything. Well, at a certain point, at that certain altitude, the air is going to be so thin that the engine's only going to suck so much air. So therefore, wouldn't that 
basically limit it because the the density of the air is so thin. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That and the size of the turbo is 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 planned in there that way. You can't just go buy a bigger turbo and bolt it on this thing because the controllers weren't designed to to work with it. Okay. And then you would probably overboost and overheat and all these other bad things would come into play. All right, uh, let's see. So that's all I'm gonna say about this one. And the next one, even shorter, is the slope controller. And I'm gonna pull up a picture and let you look at the slope controller. Because when we look at the slope controller, a minute ago, uh, we talked about the um, variable pressure controller and the variable pressure controller, we basically took out the differential controller and left with the density controller. Now take a look at this one and what do you see here? It's in the manifold pressure. Okay. The slope controller, it's not the greatest picture I have here. The slope controller has two, two lines, one sense, here's the throttle, one here and one here. So what does that make you think of? Differential pressure controller. Here we go. So now we've, so this system takes out the, the, uh, the density controller and throws in a differential, what they call a slope controller. So slope controller, so I know it's really, I'm gonna say is it's very similar to a differential controller and it's connected across the throttle plate. And of course you can see they incorporate a pressure relief valve inside of there. Uh, I don't have a lot of information on many of these systems, and so that's why I started with the one I did, and I kind of backed off as we're going and just tell you. And, and there's even more uh, systems that are discussed in some light combing publications that don't even tell you anything about the controller. So, you know, this is by no means an exhaustive, um, exhaustive, I guess, lesson on, on light combing controllers. It's just, hey, here's three types and how they're, they're put in. So we started with one, which allows us to see how two others can possibly work. So um, to a point, I would imagine that um, it's built so that it is sensing upper deck pressure and it therefore it does have the capability to also um, act as a density controller. It's across the manifold, therefore it's got the ability to act as a differential controller and three, just in case that didn't work out well, it does have a pressure relief valve to, as a safety device. So should the manifold pressure exceed the set limit because it's trying to set itself up for differential instead of an absolute, then boom, that thing's gonna open up. So that's about all I got to say is about that. So, but I'll write some notes for you and not many, so one. Um, is similar to a different is similar similar to a differential controller and it is connected across the throttle plate it is connected across the throttle plate and senses both upper deck pressure and, and manifold pressure. All right, you guys good? Because it's time to move on. Number eight, the TCM system. Good. TCM systems. Because, I don't know why. <laughs> Continental has to do things very different. 
Um, just, you know, we, when we did uh, pressure carburetors and fuel injection, fuel injection is where I was looking for fuel injection. You know, we, we had to switch gears to go to TCM. It's like, hey, forget everything you know about, about fuel injection. Let's start talking about the TCM with their, uh, with their system that doesn't even sense air. So TCM is going to be a little bit different in their pressure, their turbo controllers, but thankfully not a lot different. So um, it's just, they use different words, different terms, and they set things up just a little bit different. So I'll pull up my PowerPoint slide here. We can talk about it a little bit. Next slide, there we go. So here's my TCM system. And if we take a look at it, we are going to use three controllers in this thing. So we've got a pan going here. Pen. So we got down here, you can see them. A, the pressure ratio controller, pressure ratio controller. So it's sensing two things, ambient and upper deck pressure. We've got the rate of change controller, which is strictly checking the upper deck pressure. And we've got C, the absolute pressure controller, which is sensing upper deck pressure. So ambient versus upper deck, which is the pressure ratio. And what that's doing, it's looking at the ratio between what is outside to what is here. Um, B, again, the rate of change, which it just, I like how they called it that, as it, it, it is correct. It is actually, it senses how quickly the, the, um, the manifold pressure is changing, rather going, well, actually doesn't care about it going down, but coming up. And the reason why it wants to do that is it's looking out for that uh, overshoot condition. So if suddenly it sees that the manifold pressure is rising at a very sudden and rapid rate, it knows that the compressor wheel is being spun up quite fast and it's gonna go right past what it wanted. And so it's gonna put a halt to that. And then C of course is the absolute pressure, which we already talked about. It does exactly what uh, the Lycoming absolute pressure controller does. It's looking for absolute pressure in the upper deck. Um, all right, so um, we'll write some notes about that. Right, a lot of notes about that. I'm just trying to think what's next. Now we is, the, is the oil in this system unfiltered? No, it still comes from the engine. Oh, because you're seeing the engine oil pump? Yeah. Um, that would be a system nuance. I don't think that it is. I think it's, um, let me think. So you're going to go to the pickup screen, pickup screen. It's going to be the oil pump. No, I think it's just the way they drew it. I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's just as easy to pick it up after the oil filter than it is anything else. So, but we can talk about the oil. So oil comes off the engine oil pump. It's going to go in here to the wastegate actuator, which is spring loaded and has a, uh, a piston, which as oil pressure goes, it's going to push it and it's going to um, open the wastegate. So everything is the same. Oil pressure comes through here. Um, one thing to look at though and take a note, are these in series or in parallel? And by that, I mean, does the oil, does each one depend on the other or can each one act independently? And in order for them to be in, in parallel, I would have to have three ways to get through it. So one, two, three, drain, drain, drain. So that means that each one operates completely and totally independent just like the Lycoming. So each one can override somebody else. So if B and C are saying more turbo and A says, no, you're not getting any more, A wins. If A and C or any of them are saying more turbo and B says no more, B wins. So whichever one says open, it opens and overrides all of the other ones, which is just like the way Lycoming operated. Kevin? Yeah. Uh, what do they use for uh, to open or close the uh, oil? Uh, what do you mean? What is it used for closing the oil? Like to allow oil or or not allow oil? Or, or okay, so all of these controllers. Yeah. Okay, so each controller acts exactly like what we've just learned. It's going to have a diaphragm with a rod. And that rod is either going to come down a block oil or lift and allow it to drain. Oh, okay. Every one of them is going to do the same thing. Same thing with the light coming. Okay. Check out my pictures. All right. TCM systems. All right. So we'll say the typical system. The typical system. 
typical system. And again, they don't all have to be this way. This is just like one representative of a typical system. And it uses three controllers. Three controllers. The three controllers are one, two, and three. We have the absolute pressure controller. Absolute pressure controller, the rate of change controller, the rate of change controller, and the pressure ratio controller. All right, so what we've learned and what we've known, all controllers, all controllers are vented, all controllers, um, do I wanna say vented? No, I'll say sense, I like that word better, sense. Upper deck pressure. Upper deck pressure. One, two, three. All controllers, all controllers operate, operate to restrict or bleed off oil um, from the wastegate, from the wastegate. just like the Lycoming systems. Hector, is that supposed to be Marty McFly? Is George my McFly? George, oh Marty was the kid. Sorry. Yeah, it George says uh, <laughs> I am your density. <laughs> oh density! Oh density! Did he say that in the movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> every, every time you say it, it reminds me of him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Making fun of me. Way to go. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four. I need you to send me that. That's funny. Okay, absolute pressure controller. Let's talk about that. A E S O L U T. Absolute pressure controller. Absolute pressure controller. All right, just like the name implies, it is designed. Designed to limit, designed to limit maximum upper deck pressure. And then at a set limit, set limit, we'll bleed off oil from wastegate. We'll bleed off oil from the wastegate. All right, what does this one sound like in the light combing world? The density one? Uh, yes, it sounds to me a lot like the density controller. So, but they just call it the absolute pressure controller and there we go. So, um, I would say its job then is, hey, give me, give me the maximum. And until it has the maximum, it's saying more turbo and it is closed off. All right. I'm not going to make this one real complicated because once you understand the first one, you can just apply it to these. So we have the rate of change controller, rate of change 
controller. All right, this one we really haven't seen out of the light coming. So it senses, senses the rate, the rate, the rate at which upper deck pressure increases. So senses the rate at which upper deck upper deck pressure increases. All right, if the rate is too fast, if it's coming on too fast, too strong, it knows that there's going to be an overboost or an overshoot, I should say, um, and it doesn't want that. So this one's designed to completely stop that. So all it's gonna do is if it senses it's going up too high, boom, it's gonna start opening up and bleeding off, bleeding off the wastegate and start, um, opening the wastegate back up to shut things down. So if rate is too fast, if rate is too fast, valve opens and bleeds off oil from the wastegate. From the wastegate. All right, there we have the last one, which is the pressure ratio controller. All right, now we're seeing something different. It, well, the rate of change controller was different, but one thing I like about the, uh, the pressure ratio controller is, and perhaps Lycoming does this and I'm just not seeing it, and, and Continental's making it an issue out of it and pointing it out, I don't know. But if you think about it, what is the pressure ratio controller doing? It was sensing two things, upper deck and atmosphere. So you gotta ask yourself, why is it measuring atmosphere? Why does it suddenly care about that? What, you know, we haven't discussed this before. Well, now think about why it would. So we go back to um, what we were talking about just a few minutes ago, and that is, what about heat? What about you know, the turbo working too hard and over boosting, trying to satisfy all these conditions, and the air gets too hot, and we have this detonation. And I said, well, you know, in the light coma, you can look at it, and it kind of seems like it's more of a system design or maybe they limit the size of the turbocharger. I'm not even sure on it, to be honest with you. But with the Continental system, I can see how they do it with this pressure ratio controller. So if you program it in and you tell it, hey, listen, if the atmosphere is really, um, we're really high in altitude and the, the surrounding air is a very low pressure, that means we're up way up in high in altitude. And if you're still putting out 30, 40 inches inside of the upper deck, that must mean that you are really, the turbo is really working hard to accomplish this. And it's got to spin really fast. And if it's doing that, then the air is going to have to get really, it's probably going to be really hot from the compression. And um, we got to put a stop to this. So that's where the pressure ratio controller comes in and says, okay, you're going to stop it. When the ratio between the outside atmosphere and upper deck gets to a set limit, it starts opening up and saying, hey, that's it. You just, you can't compress anymore. We're done doing this, right? You've reached your limit, all set, all done. You've done your best you can. Thank you for trying. And that becomes its critical altitude right there. So you can actually see where it, it, it does that. And I think that's kind of cool. So um, what else do I have to say about that? No, that's about all I have to say about that for right now, but I'll write some notes and talk a little bit more about it. So now you can see how, how Continental does it. Like I said, maybe Lycoming does it in some way that they're not talking about. I just don't know. So pressure ratio controllers. So we'll start with this statement that at higher altitudes, at higher, at higher altitudes, the turbo must work hard. The turbo must work hard. must work hard to keep to keep um, manifold pressure manifold pressure set for max horsepower all right and so we know that 
at some point, the air gets too hot. It's too hot, too hot, and may cause detonation. And may cause detonation. May cause detonation. The ratio controller, now I'm just abbreviating, so pressure ratio controller, P R E S S U R, pressure ratio controller controller keeps this from happening. Keeps it from happening. So what does it do? It monitors or senses. We use the word monitors. Why not? It monitors the pressure, or I should say the ratio. I should say the pressure ratio. Be, yeah, I like that. I'm gonna say pressure ratio. Mon monitors the pressure ratio. Ratio uh, between between upper deck and atmosphere or ambient. I'll say ambient this time. Pressure ratio between upper deck and ambient air. All right, and it's going to limit limits limits upper deck pressure. to 2.2 times ambient. So I guess if I was really cool, I'd have a chart prepared and pull it right up and show you what it looks like. Cause you can imagine, so on the ground, it would be 2.2 times, so 30 inches, it would be over 60 inches. But your other controllers are going to take care of that and say, no, 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 you, you can't do that. Um, so you're going to have that. Your absolute pressure controller will be the limiting one. So as you go up in altitude, at some point, um, your absolute pressure controller is going to be saying, hey, we need more. You got to speed up. We just don't got enough over here. And then the um, pressure ratio controller is going to say, but, well, wait a minute. You know, our, our outside uh, pressure is... 15 inches so you can only go to 30 some uh, on that one so that's its whole job to do that and that's about all I have to say about let me see that one um, I do have an operation and I explain a little bit more I always we can go into that we've got the time we're here all day everybody's caught up Oh, good. J. Rod says she's good. Okay. All right. Operation. Operation. Well, let's see. Why don't we start with engine off this time? Engine off. All right. Where is the engine off? Well, wastegate is spring loaded to open position. So, wastegate. is spring loaded to open, open position. And that is turbo off, turbo off. So as soon as the engine is started, so two, we'll just do one, oh, we'll do two here. I don't know why this should be out here, but whatever, go with it, who cares? <laughs> or I can fix it on the fly. Let's see. This will screw everything up to engine. Engine is started. Engine is started. So then what happens is, there we go. Um, oil pressure, oil pressure is sent to the wastegate. Wastegate, um, 
Wastegate closes. And turbo, turbo spools up. Upper deck pressure, upper deck pressure, upper deck pressure and manifold, and manifold, manifold pressure. They are going to increase until, anybody want to care to guess which one is probably going to be the first one to start shutting things down? Anybody? Anybody? Upper deck. <laughs> uh, right. which, con which controller? Which controller is going to be the first one here? Absolute pressure controller. I'm going to go with absolute pressure controller. Unless it was spooling up so fast that the, that the uh, ratio, can, not the ratio, but the rate of change picked up. But I don't think so. If you just started it, you're, you're in this um, kind of idle mode. Uh, probably not. So upper deck pressure, manifold pressure increase until uh, absolute pressure Absolute pressure controller opens. If it does, eh, maybe the engine's not even turning fast enough. Maybe it's just all three of them are saying, hey, no more turbo. We're not happy. Okay, so the opened, but we'll say it does. Opened absolute pressure controller. I wonder if I could abbreviate A absolute. I want A B S O L U T E absolute. Pressure, absolute pressure bleeds off oil, bleeds off some oil in wastegate, in wastegate. In wastegate causing turbo to slow. Turbo too slow. Turbo too slow. Um, and stabilize and stabilize the upper deck pressure. All right. E. If if upper deck pressure increases at a rate of more than more than 6.5 inches inches of mercury per second The rate of change controller opens. Rate of change controller opens. Opens. Slowing turbo. I didn't write the rest, you know. But rate of change controller opens, bleeds off oil from the wastegate. The wastegate starts to open a little bit and slows the turbo. So I think at this point you're hopefully picking that up. All right, at about 16,000 feet, about 16,000 feet, the pressure ratio controller, the pressure ratio controller opens, opens um, and um, what can I say there? It's kind of all I've said. Pressure ratio controller opens and limits turbo output. All right, I'm going to tie something in here. Hopefully, you understand this one. If if the fuel injection system, if the fuel injection The fuel injection system uses a variable orifice, uses a variable orifice. Uh, 
not Opus, Orphis. Where would this Orphis be found? Bonus points here. Uh-oh. We got to go back to uh, TCM injection systems. Yes. So I'll give you a hint. Too. It's in the fuel injection system. <laughs> Where is the variable right orifice turbo. located? After the variable pressure controller? No. no. So where is the variable orifice located in the fuel injection system? The I would... diaphragm pump. Okay, diaphragm pump. Well, I give you props for trying, but the TCM system will not operate off of a diaphragm pump. Oh, yeah. I always get those two confused. <laughs> From the engine-driven pump? Uh, from the engine-driven pump. And the variable orifice, if you remember, is the orifice that either started to close off and get smaller, limiting the recirculation of fuel, or, uh, and by that, sends more out to the fuel control unit or opens up and allows more to recirculate. So if the fuel, fuel injection system uses a variable orifice, um, variable orifice fuel pump, fuel pump, which many of them do, low manifold pressure, low manifold pressure will reduce fuel flow, will reduce, oops. Fuel flow will reduce fuel flow during acceleration. during acceleration um, until manifold pressure um, is, I could say, at proper value. So if you remember, what happens is the pilot increases the throttle and, and that is going to increase the RPM of the engine right now. It's just the way the TCM system, or all engines, you open the throttle, the engine increases in RPM right now. So boom, throttle, throttle is opened, RPM suddenly increases, the RPM suddenly increases, the fuel pump, which is directly attached to the engine, also increases and in suddenly dumps the right amount of fuel into the engine for that speed, except the turbo is over there kind of like, um, not any students in this class, but uh, you know, in my last class, but when you ask them a question, it's like, uh huh, what? So that's kind of what the turbo is doing. We just suddenly increase the throttle and the turbo goes, huh, what? We, are we doing something? Wait a minute, can you ask the question again? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, we're gonna speed, okay, I'll speed up. All right, so all right, throughout that entire time, you've got the right, right amount of RPM and you got the right amount of fuel, but you have the wrong amount of air. It is completely, uh, devoid of the right amount of air. So you have to find some way to slow that down. So thus the fuel pump uses a variable orifice, which is sensing upper deck or manifold pressure. And until it reached that proper manifold pressure, uh, didn't adjust the orifice and give the right amount of fuel. So I could say this prevents, this prevents, prevents, an overly rich mixture um, due to turbo lag. Due to turbo lag. Turbo lag. All right, everybody's good. Janet says she's good. Moving on. She's in a perpetual state of goodness there. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> that was like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I keep wondering if anybody's going to notice that. On that diaphragm pump, some of them did have a port for the upper deck pressure, correct? They really did. But that was, Lycoming is the one that uses that, uh, that pump. Okay, okay. All right. C, other TCM systems. I'm just going to lump it into one. Other TCM systems. 
other TCMs. Um, one of the ones they have is a variable absolute. Variable absolute absolute controller. That sounds like something we saw, or sounds like what we saw with a, a Lycoming system. So this com combines combines all three controllers, all three controllers into one, into one unit. Um, uses a cam operated, a cam operated. Does sounds like a lot like that coming, doesn't it? Operated by the throttle. By the throttle to vary spring pressure, to vary spring pressure. Very spring pressure. I'll leave put that like. Light combing. Usually used with an overboost relief valve, with an overboost relief valve. Relief valve. And I knew I mentioned it somewhere. So what is an overboost relief valve? Well, this applies to both continental and light combing. I should have wrote this a long time ago. It is a spring, a spring loaded poppet valve. Spring loaded poppet valve that vents, that vents upper deck pressure, upper deck pressure. Upper deck vents upper deck pressure, um, vents upper deck overboard, overboard if it is too high. If it is too high, and let's see. Last point before we run off for dinner. Light combing also has, sorry, continental also has something called a slope controller as did Lycoming. Slope controller. Uh, I can't find a lot of information about the slope controller. Um, so I'll just tell you this, the slope controller, it um, references upper deck pressure, upper deck pressure and manifold pressure, which sounds a lot like we've already heard about. Um, to maintain, to maintain a preset pressure differential, a preset pressure differential across the throttle plate. There we go. So that is our slope controller for that one. So really all your, your questions mostly on this system are based on the three independent systems, the, the rate of change, the absolute, and the, um, what was my third one? Rate of change, absolute, rate of change, absolute, and um, differential, differential. Pressure ratio. Pressure ratio, that's it. Thank you. Pressure ratio, rate of change, and absolute. All right. Well, enjoy your dinner. I will see you guys back here in a little while. My hand hurts. Mine does too, actually, for the first time ever. I don't know why that is. I have seven pages of notes just from today.